I want to embark upon a story, a conversation uh, about money. I'm just super excited, especially and particularly because money and our money conversation, our money story has held so many of us back from living as the true abundance that we are. Walking, breathing, talking abundance. And so I think it's really important that this subject in particular be one that we tackle. I wanna start with a story. In 2012, 2012, 2013, I had a surf school, the first spiritual surf school called Smiles Surf School. And the reason that I started Smiles Surf School, where some of you guys have potentially taken lessons from me or some of my instructors if you live in California, was because I was broke as a joke. I was struggling, you know? I would have times where I'd have like $20 in my account. And I was an actor in LA and attempting to, you know, make it as an actor. And I also had this thing on my heart. This, this side thing, this extra thing, which was this spiritual, transformational, personal development, becoming the best and highest version of myself thing that had been tapping me on my shoulder. So here I am, you know, auditioning and doing acting and all of this stuff, and it just never felt in alignment. But I was so far down the rabbit hole, and I had been to graduate school and did theater school and all of these things and I had committed to doing this career and so I felt this internal struggle. Type yes if you've ever had an internal struggle uh, based on what's calling you forward and that which is um, something you've already committed to for a long time. Type yes if you've ever been in that position where you feel something calling you forward however based on your bills, based on the amount of time that you've put into this one thing, you feel sort of an internal struggle not to, you know, sort of turn your back on that thing, right? And so I had this all coming up for me. However, I, got, I kept getting this tap, like, yo, P, you are here to remind people of their truth. And all the while I'm, I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm taking workshops, and like, I feel this like internal, like, game on like this is where your life is supposed to be going and my ego was like fuck no dude like you can't do that you're an actor you can't do that you're not smart enough you can't do that you were in special education classes my mom was over here yesterday my mom is like our new nanny which is amazing I'm so grateful for my mother and she was saying she was telling me that uh, before I was one years old they already thought that I was mentally uh, retarded. They thought that there was something wrong with me. And the people who watched me and the people who, my, my, my grandmothers and everybody all said like this, he's not regular, right? And my dad was one of the only people who was like, nah, ain't nothing wrong with my son. And very early, I was placed in special education. I thought I was nine years old when it happened. My mother said it happened way earlier than that. And she said, and she just said this yesterday, she said that all the kids in the special education class that I was in, who were uh, like really special, mentally ill, drooling on themselves, like, you know, like they, 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 were, they were deeply not as normal as the other kids, right? And she said that I was like their champion. And I guess I won some award, which I remember, I slightly remember, I won some award. And she said that all of those kids, when I won the award at school, jumped up and they were all clapping. And she remembered, because it was a big moment for her, because I was so nice to them. I never treated them like they were retarded or special kids, even though I was in class with them as well. And I think this is one of the reasons why I have this underdog mentality where a lot of times I experience myself as an outsider. When people are rich and successful, there's a part of me that says, you can never be that, you're an imposter. And even if you are that, it's not here to stay because you're not like all of them, right? So this is a deep trauma, a deep wound that happened very early in my life. So I share all that to say that I felt this calling. And so I knew that I wanted to speak. I knew that I wanted to 
do and lead workshops. I knew that I wanted, you know, something in the direction of personal development, but I also was so afraid that there was no money in it, that nobody would believe me because I'm a skinny young black dude from Compton, California, raised in Harbor City, right? I had all these stories about why it wouldn't work and that if I just stayed in my lane and did acting and modeling, which, you know, was beautiful and it's great in its own rights, but it wasn't my thing. I was doing it because I felt like I needed to keep doing it. I was doing it because my sister's an accountant, my mom's an accountant, and everybody in my family is super smart, and I'm the black sheep. So here's where the, the story gets to the, the money conversation. So I decided that direction is much more important than speed. That's lesson one. Hear me, let that land. Direction is much more important than speed. Doesn't mean those two can't live together, However, instead of me rushing and running and trying to market my way into a industry, I said, P, you're not ready yet. You're not ready to hold what it is you say or you're excited to hold. You're not ready yet. So instead of me jumping all in and saying, hey guys, I'm a coach, I'm a personal development leader, I'm this, I'm that, I stayed in the background, created Smiles Surf School, and I gave myself a date. I said, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this for like six to nine months. And when that point hits, I'm jumping no matter what. And while I'm doing Smile Surf School, which produces income and has impact, which are the two things I want you to remember. Income, impact. Because you always wanna lead with revenue and heart. Revenue, heart. Revenue, heart. They can live together. Fulfillment, money. We all have lots and lots and lots of ideas. Type hell yes if you have a lot of ideas about how you could make money. I had a lot of ideas about what could make money, but for me, what produced the highest income and impact for me? And that was to create my own business where I could still teach personal development and transformational practices while making money instantly, while making an impact on people and watching their psychology. People would come to me and say, Oh, I don't know about water. I'm really scared of water. I don't think I'm going to surf today. And I'd say, you're going to surf today. And I'm going to take pictures of it. And I'm going to take videos. And I would go and I would explain to them that the, that the body is like a computer, right? And the more you fall on the surfboard, the more the body will figure out what works and what doesn't work. And so all we're going to do is we're going to go have fun. We're going to tap into our inner five-year-old. We're going to go have fun on that, in that water. We're going to commune with nature. We're going to commune with Mother Earth, with God. We're going to have a great time and you're going to surf today. Do you hear me? And they'd say, Okay, and we get out there and everything they did because here's the thing progress over perfection hear me Progress over perfection so many of us overthink overanalyze and over plan because we're trying to get it right and right is the most dangerous drug on the planet Oh, oh blah. Hear me right is the most dangerous drug on the planet and so for me it was highly important that I reminded my clients who were coming to go surfing, that it was progress over perfection. That the ego would trick them into thinking that they had to get it right immediately. And that ego would keep them from surfing today. Ooh, let it land, because it's all a metaphor for our lives. Let it land. The ego would trick them and keep them. Is this landing, by the way? Please let me know if this is landing. The ego would trick them and keep them from surfing today. And so I started playing with the, with the psychology, right? They're like, ah, oh, there's something bigger at play here, right? What I did at $60,000 a year, having fun, giving my gift, I have transformed into $600,000 a year. Now, I was weary about even doing this video because Alexi and I do not talk about money per se. 2017, we, were, we became millionaires and kept a lot of it, which is, because there's people who, who produce a million dollars, but they only keep a little bit of it. We produced it and have it. Not all of it, but we have it. And so what I'm about to go through and talk to you about is something that has served me. And I'm gonna use one more story, one more metaphor for you to understand what, what, what I'm talking about. And what I'm talking about, guys, by the way, is selective discipline. Selective discipline is the thing that will produce as long as you are remembering impact and income. Income AKA profit can be time, time freedom. Profit can be what you experience 
when you look at your child's smile, right? Profit, income, that could be anything. But we're talking about finances here, so we'll keep it on that. So, selective discipline. This is why this is so important. So, uh, Alexi and I got together in 2013. Funny enough, I moved back in with my mother in 2013. I met her, we were together for a little bit. I had this amazing apartment in Hancock Park, and I knew at that point that I was spending too much money on this apartment and not enough money on my personal development and uh, setting myself up to win. And so what I did was, was I took a few steps back to take 150 steps forward. Let that land, because some of you guys are trying to maintain an image. Some of you are trying to maintain these big expenses. And the expenses are keeping you from what matters the most. And so Alexi and I met in 2013. Alexi, A-type personality, alpha female, right? Big personality, Preston, smiles, A-type personality, alpha male big personality and so when we first got together it was like this right we kept bumping into each other and you know happy wife happy life how many of you guys have ever heard that well hear me I got that I could fight and be right all damn day however if my wife was not happy if my girlfriend was not happy I was fucked no matter what cuz the environment was poisoned right so it was important for me to figure out how to align with what was most important for my, the person I love the most. Like, real talk. So, I did what I'm teaching you right now, which was selective discipline. So instead of me going, okay, well I can do this for her, and I can do that for her, and I can do that for her, and I can do that for her, and I can do all these things, right? How many of you guys uh, have a million things you could do, right? I said, what's the one thing that if I just worked on that muscle, if I just did that thing, it would raise the bar for everything else. Because remember, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? So as the tide raises, it lifts everything in the dock, not just one boat. So you ask yourself, what is the tide? And what I came up with, because I understood Alexi's love language was words of affirmation. You see, my love language, what I love the most is physical touch. And so I was giving her physical touch all day, massaging, doing all this stuff. But what I wasn't practicing was verbally telling my wife how much I appreciated her. And so I chose to use selective focus to turn the volume up. I amplified that one thing and it literally rose all tides. So I began to publicly and privately praise her, tell her how much I appreciate her. It was genuine as fuck. I wake up in the mornings and I look at her and I'd say, listen to me, I am so grateful for you. You are the best wife that a man could ever ask for. You are my queen, you are my light. I'm so proud of you. And I began to pour into her. And then I would do it on social media and things of this nature, just to remind her of who and what she is and what she is to me. Now, go back to the story. I could have done four million things but I selectively, I chose a selective discipline and did that thing over and over and over and over and over until it produced. And this, my friends, is how you level up your money game. So I have medicine on my heart. I have powerful medicine to give to the planet. Right now, I have selectively chosen to have that medicine go, for the most part, to men, right? My social media, of course, it's like to everybody. But the work that I'm doing right now, I, I've taken the seven million ideas that I have, and I did the same thing I did with Smile Surf School, the same thing I did with Alexi, the same thing I've done over and over again, and I've narrowed it down. What's the one thing? Man Cave. So I created a conscious man brotherhood called Man Cave, a league of extraordinary gentlemen, such that men can remember their truth, such that men can level each other up because iron sharpens iron. And so the, the, the idea is a conscious man is the only type of man that can help another man. And we keep raising the bar for each other. You see, I grew up playing sports. And in sports, with my buddies, we'd, we'd be outside all the time. And so when, when one person would level up in basketball, I would go 12 times harder just so that it was equal. Because dudes, dudes play for points. You know, this is how we work, right? We play video games for points, we play sports for points, and we do all the rest of our lives for points. And so for me, I figured out that when I'm around dudes who are playing at a high level, I play there too. And so I created Man Cave, a conscious man brotherhood, in order to do that. So, one, if you know a man, or if you are a man and you're watching this, 
I invite you to be a part of the next class that starts on March 10th, aka you would need to put your application in very soon because it's filling up. That's one. Number two, for any of you, man, woman, I don't care who you are, you want to level up, you want to take your life to the next level, it's, it's this. Focus. Selective discipline and focus. Ask yourself out of the 40 million things you're doing every day. You guys have to hear this. There are 35,000 different distractions happening every day, consciously and unconsciously, subtly and right in your face. They're literally, the whole universe is saying, here, me, me, email, mommy, touch this, do that. Get this cream, get this bra, get this car, do this thing. You're not good enough if you don't have these muscles, if you don't look like this. Right? All of society is trying to get our attention. All of society is trying to get us to buy, buy, buy. It's trying to get us um, uh, addicted. More, better, different. More, better, different. I want more money. I want a better car. I want a different mate. I want more um, uh, hair. I want a, a different job. Right? This is the game. This is the game they have us playing. And we're on this fucking hamster wheel that never stops. More, better, different. So, you want to change the game, bring it in, select a focus. What's the one thing? Ask the question, what produces the highest impact and income? And then whittle down, just do that thing over and over and over again. I Hear me, You'll, the emails will be there. Some things will have to go way out of balance. Some things will go unserved. Some things will fall way out. For those of you guys who've been following me long enough, I used to be... Uh, one of the founders of something called the Love Mob. And the Love Mob was organized acts of love. And if you guys remember, we were doing flash mobs and I was Preston freaking social guy and I was at every party and hanging out with everybody and I was that dude. And what I did was the same thing. I keep doing the same thing over and over again. And that same thing keeps producing for me. What I did was, is I said, okay, there's a new chapter. There's something else being calling, coming out of me. And instead of me staying social, I'm gonna do what, what nature does. Because you see, when you plant a seed in the ground, it goes into darkness, and in that darkness, it must germinate, right? Sometimes you gotta go deep. You gotta go deep within. You gotta, elevation requires separation, right? And you have to understand that you're either on the way or you're in the way. And so the game, the game for me was to separate from social Preston and dive into another aspect of myself. Selective focus. Ask yourself, what produces? And do that. Understanding that some things, like your muscles, like your booty, some things are gonna have to take a back seat for that which is calling you forward. There is medicine on your heart. There are gifts, talents, and abilities that have only been given to you. And if you do not express them, the universe, God, Buddha, Allah, Krishna, whatever name is on the door, will put them, place them in someone else. So it's game time. You did not, you did not receive those gifts only to keep them and hoard them. You received those gifts to circulate them back into the planet. And the best way you do that is you let go of thinking that you need to be perfect. Remember, progress over perfection. Rastafari, let it land. The most powerful drug in the world is trying to be right. Let go of perfection and step into progress. If this inspired you in any way, I ask that you guys share this message. I truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you and even whatever goes on, I also challenge you to watch it again. There is straight up wisdom in what I'm saying, and I'm not saying it about me, because it's not about me, this is coming through me. I'm being used, and that's the game, right? You ask me what my purpose is? My purpose is to be the embodiment of God's love as a husband, a father, and a transformational coach. And we have many purposes. I love you guys all. Blessings and blessings. Man Cave, www.prestonsmiles.com forward slash man cave. Send your dudes there, tag them in it. Watch this again and share it with somebody. Blessings and blessings, guys. Thank you for all the love uh, for our son. He's so amazing. So amazing. The dude's changed my life forever.